and welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and know what's looking for your next read, then join us. Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. Today's bookish guest is Sarah from Seedman Books, booktube and Instagram account. Hi, Sarah. Hi. So happy to have you here. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. I am uh, in my early 40s. I am married, happily married. I just had my 10-year wedding anniversary. I live in Toronto. Thank you. And I am mom to two cats. (laughs) Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, I think I'm adopting a cat because I'm by myself. So I think that's one of my full um, projects because I had a cat, but she passed away last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. She's lived to 16 years old. So oh, goodness. She was a lot. She lived a long life. So My, my one boy will be 14 tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. I They're know. amazing. <laughs> They're wonderful. They're wonderful companions, truly. They really are. So that's yeah. awesome. Yay. All right. So let's talk about your booktube account. What kind of videos do you share? What can we expect from watching your channel? What, what inspired you to start a booktube channel, actually? It was actually watching other booktube channels. And uh, this is not my first venture onto YouTube. About five or six years ago, I actually had a knitting podcast that I ran for about four years. Oh, so wow. I was familiar with being on YouTube. And then I got back into reading again. And I started searching on YouTube for book reviews. And I found booktube. But at the time, it was mostly YA. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, romance is just not being represented. So... I decided, I thought, well, why not? So I just decided I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk about. And that's what, uh, you know, it, it was, it's slow going, but I'm enjoying it. I do it because I love it. I love it. Yeah, I actually, the way I got back to reading was thanks to BookTube. And mm-hmm. so I ended up finding someone, I had another podcast and they told me about BookTube and I was like, oh, okay, let me just check it out. And it was mainly YA fantasy. And mm-hmm. so I got, I read like all the Sarah Day Mass and all this Y fantasy at the time, like 2016. Yep. And so I saw a video about a new adult and that's how I ended up learning about romance was because somebody mm-hmm. was talking about new adult romance. Mm-hmm. And so I just looked at those recommendations and then I just started following those romance book tubers and I was yes. like, oh my gosh. And there were like four or five. There were not a lot at the time. No. Like no. 2016 was like, it was mainly YA. Even the big accounts were reading YA, like they were not That's reading right. romance. They're not reading romance, which is which is amazing. But you know, at the time they were not. It was just like, you know, so I just bench watch every new adult recommendation. <laughs> like, and there were like 10 of them, and I just like, and they would give you recommendations like 10, five or ten series, and I just read them all, and I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I need mm-hmm. more. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so for me, I ended up starting a podcast. Um, by, I had a friend who wanted to do a show and I was like, well, I'll just do a broadcast. I thought of doing book too, but I was like, I'm not camera ready. You know, all those hangouts. <laughs> so, so my, so my track was a podcast, but I, I feel like it's just like, I, I feel like it's been great. Like the explosion of romance content creators yes. are happening yes like right now like i watch booktube um that's where i get my recommendations and so it's really awesome to see channels like yours and chloe and mm-hmm. even Bree, like just to have like awesome content about romance yes yes because i find it gets a lot of slack mm-hmm. it gets a lot of people turn their noses up at it yes it is the biggest seller in books mm-hmm. period yes it needs more love (laughs) it does i'm sorry i was talking to a friend today um we're going on tangents um i was talking to a friend today and she was texting me about independent bookstores and she's like do you know about unabridged bookstore and i was like yes it's down the street from my house i have an independent bookstore but they don't have romance so i'm like i'm not gonna go because they don't have romance like i'm not like what's the point what's the point like you know so that's my biggest gripe with some independent bookstores they don't have romance there's some good ones out there there's some romance only bookstores but there's also yep. like some um east city books is a good one there's like mm-hmm. a couple of them that do have romance content which is yep. amazing thanks to the pandemic and so those are the ones i support but 
you know. Of romance course. is a big, romance is a big seller, and it just like mm. I'm just annoyed how they turn off the knives. Like, oh, it's too cheap, you know, mass markets. Like, yeah. they take too much space. We don't sell that many. And I'm like, people read romance. <laughs> not <laughs> people it. might not admit that they read romance, but you darn well know that everybody reads romance. Mm-hmm. And the thing that gets me is that if you look at a lot of other novels, romance is in there. Like yep. you're saying with Sarah J. Mass, there is romance in there. Yes. Even the Harry Potter series had romance in it. Yep. You know, Twilight. It's a yes. paranormal <laughs> romance. <laughs> yes. So it just like I don't it's know. the backbone. And I don't think a lot of people give it enough, you know, support. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So gosh, we gotta read romance. So um, what can we expect from your channel? Um, The kind of videos that I do, I love doing TBRs. I Mm -hmm. live off of doing TBRs. I know a lot of people are mood readers. I am not one of those people. I need a structured TBR. I need to know what I'm reading that month. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, if I just stood in front of my shelves and just had to pick something, I would never get anything read. Oh. So I go through my want to read list on Goodreads. So it's all stuff that I want to read, Mm -hmm. but I need a detailed list every month of what I'm going to read. I do weekly vlogs, so I vlog my week as I go, you know, what books I've read, and, you know, just some general day-to-day stuff as well, mm-hmm. and I love doing recommendations or anticip- and anticipated reads videos. Mm, I love I it. do the uh, just regular anticipated reads, and I also do the Harlequin anticipated reads, which are some of my favorites to do. I love the Harlequin anticipated rereads, because there's so many books out there, I and know. it's like, it's someone to call them for <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> I get what the, I need to read. <laughs> tell me what I need to read. I get the email from Lisa from Harlequin, that's our contact, and she'll send me like, here's the book tour. And I was like, and then she's like, if you want any of the 60 books that we're publishing, let me know. And I'm like, yeah. I need you to tell me what exactly I should read. <laughs> <laughs> Just send me all of them and I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's so many. It's amazing. It's it's great. And we'll Absolutely. talk about Harlequin very shortly. Yes. yes. Um, so let's talk about when did you start reading romance? I started romance in my early 20s. Okay. So about 20 years ago now. Oh my and gosh. I started with Harlequin. Um, my aunt actually used to work for the Toronto Public Library. She was the head of payroll. Mm -hmm. And because, as you know, Harlequin publishes so many titles every month, they can only keep so many on the shelves at the library. So every month, a whole bunch of them would get literally put into the dumpster behind the library. And my aunt would go back there and grab them by the bag full. And bring, because she loved, she would read one a day on her commute back and forth to work. You know, they're quick little reads, right? Yeah. Yeah. And my grandmother loved them. And then I just slowly started picking them up. And, you know, at first I even all admit, I was like, really Aunt Sandy? Like, come on. Like, that's a little, you know, oh, romance. But then I started reading them and went, no, wait, there's something here. And these are really good. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I saw, I heard that story when you mentioned Sabrina. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like they're throwing away books. But there's so many. It's true. There's too many. Like, I mean, you're going back years ago thankfully now with the advent of ebooks yeah most of Tro- like most of the library's collection is now through ebooks they don't tend to buy the titles anymore okay. yeah so I f- at least we're saving some trees <laughs> i feel you yeah i think so i think well and i like ebooks fire so i'm like i'm all mm-hmm. for that i love that i can just pick it up and i can read in an hour or a couple hours and it's exactly. like exactly it's like exactly so-, <laughs> so talk about harlequin mm-hmm. um so let's talk about what are you why should we pick them? Which was probably because they're easy to read. Um, but what are some of your favorite lines and what we should know about some of these lines and what kind of books should we expect? Um, I absolutely love them. I think they're great. My favorite lines, if I had to pick a couple of them, because mm-hmm. I really do in a way love them all, um, mainly because there's a little something for everybody. Mm-hmm. The intrigue line is one of my absolute favorites. They are a definite romantic suspense. Mm-hmm. So if you like that kind of military police officer oftentimes a serial killer is chasing somebody you know they're with of course a very romantic element and of course the stakes are a lot higher in those because there is oftentimes a thriller aspect to them Mm -hmm. and they're really really enjoyable um another one for the other the opposite end of the spectrum in a way are the um harlequin super 
uh, Harlequin special editions, excuse me, which are more home and family. You get a lot of mm -hmm. cowboy stories, a lot of series within the series that deal with like huge families. So you're getting everybody's story, that very small town atmosphere. They're, they're really enjoyable, single parents, things like that. Mm -hmm. They're really fun. Um, and there's, I feel like there's one Harley of mine that's all about Secret Baby. Do you know which one it is? The, the, the one that typically deals with like the Secret Baby or Marriage of Convenience, those are the Harlequin Presents novels. Okay. And those are the ones I think everybody thinks of when they think of Harlequin, the white cover <laughs> with the circle and then the red at the top. That's yeah. The, okay. Those are the Presents novels, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, had, I had someone else come and they're like, it's Harlequin, Secret Babies. And I'm like, tell me more. I know you. Yeah. We'll talk more about Secret Baby shortly, but yeah, I'm, I'm all about Secret Baby. I'm like, okay, tell me more. <laughs> so, this is awesome. Um, so, now let's get to Roman's Tribes. What are some of your favorite tribes? My favorite tropes would definitely have to be um, Friends to Lovers. I am mm -hmm. a big fan of Friends to Lovers. Um, enemies to Lovers as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually more, the more that I'm reading it, I'm starting to get a little bit more into the single parent. Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know if that's a trope per se, but you're yeah. seeing it more and more now. Um, yeah, those, those tend to be my favorites. I, I like, especially with friends to lovers, I just love the aspect of, you know, they knew each other for years and, you know, now all of a sudden they're developing feelings. I just think it's really cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And yeah, um, so I have a recommendation for single parent. Do you have any specific, do you like single parent who's a widow, single dad, single mom, like any preference? I, I'm or? pretty easy with uh, the single parents. <laughs> okay, um, I would say Down Too Deep came out last year and it was okay. actually really good. I remember, I think they're both our, they're both our single parents. Okay. So um, he's a widow and she is, um, I don't know. She's a single mom. So they they work together and it's a really good scene. Um, it's by Jay Daniels. Um, oh, it's part of a series, but you can read it standalone. And if you want to read the rest of the series, I would say just read the first book and yep. the last book. You don't need to read the other two. The other two okay. are loosely based. Um, okay. So that's a single parent, I think, in terms of. And then, do you have any suggestions for enemies to lovers? Oh yeah, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren is. That was my favorite book that I read last year. Oh. I know a lot of people. It, it got a lot of people either loved it or hated it. Yes, I, I hear it. I <laughs> loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think that The Honeymooners got a bad rap because it did not have steam. Although people, some people call it, they have seam. I was like, no, there was no seam in that section. They took it away. Um, so it's one of those uh, for Christina Lauren's longtime fan to write their older books. There's yes. Like, there's not a lot of seam. And, you know, the earlier books, there's like <laughs> seam all over the place. Um, so I think that's why I got a bad rap. But I really loved it. Like, it was just, it was a fun book. I was like, oh, my God, why? It's and perfect. the funny thing is, is that I didn't start reading Christina Lauren with the old stuff. I didn't pick them up. Ooh. Until I read, what book came out before the Unhoneymooners? Dating You, Hating You? That's, uh, where, yeah. really, that's where I started with yeah. it. So I didn't read, was it the Bastard series that they yep, did? Yep, the Bastards. Yeah. I haven't the read season. that. So I came into it saying, what I love about it, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of steam in it, but I was yeah. able to hand it to my mother and say, yeah. Mom, you've got to read this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I didn't have to worry about her, not not that she'd get offended. She's reading the Winston Brothers series right now, which is pure steam. <laughs> and she's loving it. But still, it's one of those books you can recommend to anybody, regardless if they enjoy adult content or not. Yep. That's yeah, I, I, think, I think that's a really good way to look at it. Yeah, the Bastard series I read it um, in 2016. It was one of those books that was mentioned in BookTube. Yeah, um, yep. And <laughs> I would say it's it's a it's steamy. I, I think it's problematic um, yeah. in today's era. Like uh -huh. things have changed dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> you know, workplace relationships. Yes. yes. Um, so it's like I I don't know. Um, I don't know if it stands the time. Like you know, yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's just like it's a fun series. It's like, mm -hmm. but it's and they wrote as fan fiction. Like this was, I think, trial fan fiction. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. 
I'm interviewing Christina Lawrence. I'm excited that she dig in a little bit further, <laughs> you know, their origin story. I am so excited about their new book coming out. I cannot wait. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Um, so let's talk about your least favorite trope, which is actually one of my favorite tropes, which I love. I am secret baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I just... I, I just, to me, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, really? <laughs> I know. <laughs> My friends and I um, were having a big discussion about this a couple, uh, uh, about a week ago or so, because I was reading uh, the newest book in the Gold Valley series by Maisie Yates, um, mm -hmm. The Hero of Hope Springs, which is fantastic. But it's not a secret baby, but it's an accidental pregnancy, which is, to me, it's like a gray area between the two of them, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just, to me, it might feel a little cheap. For like a way to advance the plot you're now forcing these characters together because mm -hmm. of an because of this baby and are they together because of the baby or because they want to be together mm -hmm. that's that's just my opinion on the secret baby i, I it's not that oh, i yeah. don't read it it's just my least favorite i kind of always go oh really you went there <laughs> i feel you <laughs> i just like i think for me it's like bring on the drama like okay. bring okay, on the drama fair. like the chaos <laughs> like he's so messy like it's like you're not supposed to know that i have a baby and then you're like are together for the baby or for me and all those different things and it's like it's so much drama that is fantastic. As someone who likes to read drama sometimes, that's that's the that's the angst that I go for. Yeah. I can't deal with like miscommunication angst or some other inks where it's too dark for me. That's like too much. I feel yeah. like this is like my dark moment. It's like Secret Baby. And it's funny because one of my favorite books is actually the Secret Baby trope, and it's um it's an older novel. Okay. And it's part of um Susan. Uh, Susan Mallory's Fool's Gold series. I think it's the second book, Finding Perfect. Okay. And they had a relationship as teenagers. She left, found out she was pregnant, and comes back when the kid's like 10. So it's more like a super kid at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I still kid. really love that storyline. Like, oh. there was something about that that I really liked. I don't know what, it, it's Susan Mallory's just such a great author anyway, so that's probably what made it good for me. But that there's, it's an older book, but that's a recommendation for sure. Okay, that's awesome. I can't <laughs> wait. So let's talk about women's fiction um, with romance. What books would you recommend? Oh, women's fiction. There are some amazing ones coming out now. Um, Maisie Yates just wrote, um, oh my goodness, Secrets from a Happy Marriage, which I read, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I also uh, really like Jill Shalvis' The Wildstone series. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. Um, Kristen Higgins is knocking out of the ballpark. Always the last to know, which I just read recently again. And I, I'm a, I am a huge Kristen Higgins fan. She could write a grocery list and I would read it happily. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and Family for Beginners by Sarah Morgan was also fantastic. I love it. I love Sarah Morgan. I think she writes like amazing, like oh, I don't yeah. know, women's fiction. Like I got her Christmas book. Like that's a treat that I'm going to be treating myself like we're shortly. I have to read a couple of things um for the podcast and that's like I'm just like bored to me Sarah Morgan book. I'm like I need like some Sarah Morgan in my life. <laughs> I know every like I now look forward to like the last two years she's put the Christmas book out and I'm like okay where's the one for this year? <laughs> yeah it's yeah tradition I, now. <laughs> it's tradition I'm like Christmas sisters are so fantastic. Yes. The one in December was fantastic yes. and even the Christmas I think she had a Christmas book it was part of a series and it was Romans. It's like Fifth Avenue, Moonlight in Fifth Manhattan, I think that was. Miracle somewhere. on Fifth Avenue. Miracle on Fifth Avenue. Yeah. So they're like, so she has like Christmas books. Like, absolutely. Christmas absolutely. Movie. So awesome. Yeah, she's great. She's great. So, mm -hmm. what happened some of your favorite books in the year or the year right? Some of my favorite books so far this year. Um, definitely, I have read Act Like It like, by Lucy Parker. Mm -hmm. which I think is the first in the London Celebrity Series. Yes. I think everybody has read this series except for me, and I'm just finally diving into it. And I'm like, it is so good. I haven't. I need to read it. Oh, I it's have so it. Good. I own it. Characters <laughs> are so witty, and the location. If you can get it on audio, it's if you're an audiobook listener, it's really, really great on audio. Um, I owe you one, um, by uh, also by Lucy Parker, the same series. Mm -hmm. And my favorite, though, that I recommend to everybody, and I'm sure everybody else has read it, is Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words. That's so okay. <laughs> so good. Okay. Like Andy Art. Oh, my God. I was driving to work listening to that, and I would just 
cracking up laughing in my car. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so good. I listened to that one um, when it came out because it, yes. it came out as audio first and yes. it was just so good. I was like, I love the audiobook setting, the podcast setting. Like mm -hmm. you kept me in anytime they talk about podcasts, I'm like, I'm, I'm in and I'll just, I love this. It was so good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I owe you one story was by Sophie Kinsella. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That one, it, it, it's an, it's a book that's a little bit older and that one was more of a special meaning to me this year mm -hmm. because in it, the main character, um, her father had passed away 10 years earlier and I mm -hmm. lost my dad in January and I oh, read it so sorry. within weeks. Thank you. Within weeks of losing him. And it just mm -hmm. kind of gave me what I needed to know that it's okay to, to laugh and still, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just, it meant a lot to me. It was the right book for the right time. But outside of that, still recommend. I mean, Sophie Kinsella is still a great author, you know? Yeah. I really like her work. Yeah, I really like her work. I like her yeah. Sam and Lone Spreader than the Shopaholic series. Yes. Um, so yes. it's like if you read her Shopaholic series and you don't like it, try her Sam and Lone's. She has Absolutely. some great ones out there. So. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. So what are some of your most anticipated new releases from 2020? We were talking about Christina Lauren, but I so yeah. want to read in a holidays. I did request on NetGalley, and I haven't heard anything back yet. I'm like, please, please, please. <laughs> I read it. It's fantastic. I like it. it. I, it's fantastic. It's um, It has some time travel, which mm -hmm. for me, I'm not a big time travel fan. So that's okay. like my, my biggest like pet peeve. I was like, oh, I don't want to read this over and over. Um, so there's some time travel. <laughs> Um, but it goes back to basics. There's family, it's Christmas, it's holiday season. Yes, yes. So it's like very holiday um, romance. And there's like a question about like, who is she going to end up with? Um, <laughs> so it's it's cute. I really like it. Like, it was cute. That's awesome. And I also have Crazy Stupid Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. I've read the first two in the Bromance Book Club series and love them. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to this one especially because it involves a woman who has a cat cafe yes that's all i needed to hear i'm like yes i want to read it right now <laughs> <laughs> yes i actually had that book and i was gonna pick it up this week and i was like cat cafe it will be perfect and then i just got <laughs> i got distracted by other shiny books i need to read um, it happens <laughs> it happens it's like it happens to the best of us but you know it is what it is <laughs> so, yeah, exactly uh we got till october so we have time to read it that's right. Awesome. So which your books did you read over the past couple of months that you recommend? Um, Beard Science by Penny Reed, which I just read recently. The mm -hmm. whole Winston Brothers series, if you haven't picked it up, it is an absolute delight. Mm -hmm. um, there's just something about that series that just makes me smile. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of it, it, I mean, yes, it's a romance. Mm -hmm. But there's also the character growth, which is actually a bit more, which I'm enjoying more than the romance. Mm. No, it's, I don't need him to complete me. I can complete me on my own, yep. but having him is just an extra bonus. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what I loved about it. The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare, which mm -hmm. is a historical, hands down is my so new favorite good. Tessa Dare. It was so good. So good. I laughed through that whole book. Yes. <laughs> Sunshine on Silver Lake by Annie Rains, um, which I read recently from Nat Galley. And um, it was a great small town contemporary romance um about a woman dealing with uh losing her mother to breast cancer and a guy who had an alcoholic father i mean a lot of ex you know external factors but their relationship was just so so sweet it was so good oh so thank you sarah for being in the show no problem you're welcome thank you if you enjoyed this podcast feel free to share with friends subscribe or rate and review the show this is the easiest way to support this podcast want to join a romance loving community Want weekly book recommendations, monthly author Q&As, and book recommendation meetups? Make new friends, then join our Patreon community. To sign up, please follow the links in the show notes. What to Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts to love on frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.